is the new AP program mentioned as a quote unquote affinity or quote unquote loyalty program, not governed by legacy. Vast guy, what are your thoughts on this? Well, if you look at JPEG's uh, precise comments, uh, let's see if I have them here. Okay. Oh, nope, they're not here. But so, okay, so he basically, <laughs> he essentially says, look, um, our value statement was incorrect. Uh, we want to do something more in line with what our shareholders want <laughs> and, and for the for the guest experience we provide that in so many words, he's saying there's going to be a realignment here. You know, the the all you can eat buffet style of the annual passholder system as it existed is probably going to be gone. It because... went without the other buffets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Um, if you look at it, uh, um, you know, it, we've talked about this before in, in our last uh, segment that we did with uh, George on his channel. We talked about the price increases for the parks and how, um, you know, annual pass holders are really getting quite a good deal if you pay by the month versus if you pay by the day. Right. And because of that, because of their disproportionate level of access, because of how they use the parks and treat them, it's just, you know, that balance is incorrect for where they want to be. And unfortunately for a lot of the day guests who are spending so much, um, their experience may have been hindered by guests who are locals who go on a fairly regular basis and take up some of the amenities that those uh, uh, higher paid guests are expecting. And, and you know, Vash, this is a great opportunity. Yeah, I mean, th yeah, this is a great opportunity for Disneyland Resort to sort of recalibrate, so to speak. Because, you know, since the monthly pass um, payments for the annual passes, Disneyland Resort has become really like, you, you touched upon, like, it's like a local's hangout, you know, where people come and go. And it's like, it's like almost like the local mall almost, right? I mean, everyone just kind of pops in and out. With this new um, AP program, which he says something to the effect of it, JPEX, something to the effect of it being like a frequent buyer program or something like that wasn't it something to that effect yeah he i mean he didn't say those words specifically but when you think loyalty program you kind of think okay well wait a minute what uh, this kind of changes the dynamic here and what i was kind of thinking in my head was you know you have like a, a say like mcdonald's for example they have kind of had a loyalty program where if you right. spend there you get a certain amount of points back and you can trade those points into uh you know kind of uh, items on the menu what if um, you saw something where if you spent a certain amount of money in the parks, maybe you get an extra, you know, blockout day or or reservation day, you know, kind of those kind of things to increase um, pass holder spending um, that would reward them in some way. So I think that's kind of what we're dealing with here. It's not going to be like an annual pass holder program where it's like, hey, you buy a ticket for a year and you. He, you know, you, you divide that among 12 months and so forth. Now, it's probably going to be more of like a subscription platform. And I think that's where we're going. And, and this may not have any relevance to do with it. But if you actually look at both sides, Disneyland is dealing with a whole other different kind of beast than Walt Disney World. Because Walt Disney World, as of right now, is not dealing with those kind of annual pass discrepancies that Disneyland's going forth with. But I wonder if there is a bigger goal in mind as far as even like when they were releasing uh the ideas for disneyland forward even before that they had mentioned about like with the mass mandate and the physical distancing and disneyland you know and everything but disney was already saying you know we have bigger plans in mind so i wonder if disney's goal is to then treat disneyland as as orange grove had put it like rather than make it just like a locals type of hangout but a tourist destination. So that way they can get the city on their side to say, Hey, we'll free up this land so you can move forward with, with the Disneyland project. Cause I think that's the end term goal as far as what Disneyland goes. And I think the, this new annual pass program is the tip of the iceberg for that. Yeah, exactly. This is an opportunity for Disney to, to, to break away. Like, like you were saying, uh, George, to break away from that locals mindset and become more of a tourist destination. Obviously Disney still wants to have the locals to fill in the gaps for those off season, you know, times of the year. But 
I think they want to have more balance. They want to get more that more of those tourism dollars. And this is a, a, a great opportunity to do that. It really is. And to your point, George, that was the intention going all the way back to when the Disneyland Resort was founded in 2001. The idea was we're going to be a destination type place and that that, that balance never really that never really happened. And uh, they just kept fostering that um, annual pass holder relationship because they kind of needed to. And what that caused was kind of a, an, an imbalance of, of tourist versus local. And I think they really want to kind of balance that equation like you guys have, have alluded to. Look, the annual pass holders, there were a million of them. When you have a new attraction coming or you have a, an event or a, a celebration or something and those million guests wanted to send the park at the same time, you run into significant problems. From what I have heard, this is going back in 2015, they wanted to take that million annual pass holder number and reduce it by half. Wow. That's kind of where they wanted to go. I think, though, that has changed with a reservation system type setup in that you don't necessarily have to limit how many annual pass holders you, uh, or, or annual passes or, in this case, loyalty programs that you sell. You just limit how frequently they can go. And I think that's that's where this will kind of shift the balance um, to make a park that's a little bit more, um, what is it, to equitable? Uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, and I think a lot of, I think a lot of annual pass holders are going to be upset with that. I think, I think a lot yeah. of people are going to be upset because, you know, here in Southern California, if you're an annual pass holder, it, it just you, you just come to expect being able to go to the parks whenever you want. And I agree with you, Vash. I think those days are over. Yeah, I mean, it. I, look, they're they're still going to need locals. They're still going to need the. Uh, a, a kind of uh, loyalty program or pass the program in place. But yes, there will be a lot of people that will be upset. Look, per speaking from personal experience, I went down the parks um, one year. Um, it was actually uh, around the opening of Tropical Hideaway. And so I remember being in Tropical Hideaway, meeting with kind of guests there and kind of seeing like what the response was and, and so forth. And we kind of spoke to a guest who was there who literally didn't have a job who was getting social security checks and forwarding those straight towards her pass every single month. Wow. That's, that's, you know, it's like, look, you can have opinions about that either way, but right. I, I mean, it's from a company right. standpoint. Yeah. I was just going to say on a company standpoint, if you are running a business, if you look yeah. at it through a bigger perspective yeah. and nothing against the locals of, um, um, annual pass holders in California. So Orange Grove, don't cut me. Um, <laughs> but um, it's to the notion of speaking in a, in a company standpoint that would you then rather have someone that's traveling for a lengthy vacation who is willing to say, hey, you know what? We spent money. Let's spend money on restaurants, on uh, shopping, on you know better tickets as to opposed to someone that may just go in for a few hours vlog video take pictures maybe buy a souvenir mug and then leave you know so in a company standpoint i could see why disney is starting to lean more towards that for disneyland because that's how they get that revenue at world well and you know what i'm really curious about like this loyalty program because like 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 to vash's point it it, it, it sort of implies it's gonna reward um spending so it's kind of like when you go like my local boba place I, I go there like three times a week to get boba right but they have these stamp cards like every 10th boba you get a free boba so if it's something like that where disney's rewarding spending with free tickets for family and friends or things like that yeah. that's gonna push locals to spend more that's gonna make them say hey you know what Let's stay at the Grand Cali or the Disneyland Hotel this time because it, it, it's points for us. It, it's almost it's like it, it's almost like a uh, permanent promotional deal of how Disney like used to do, like with the Year of a Million Dreams, and you know where they did sweepstakes where you could stay in the Disneyland Dream Suite or the Cinderella Castle Suite. So I think if they keep that, it's a good promotion on themselves. But at it's a permanent standpoint, it's like, well, yeah, we if we're going to pay a little bit more for these passes, we're getting some benefits to it in the end. 
Absolutely. And as you heard Bob uh, Chapek during the earnings call, he's like, we haven't even scratched the surface. I mean, you could imagine where this could go. I mean, what if you had a point barrier that you spend a certain amount and you get maybe a max pass reservation? You know, what if, uh, you know, what if you spend past that point and you get access to a block out date that you previously weren't going to get access to? You know, it's those kinds of things that they're really looking uh, towards is, is kind of, okay, how, how can we how can we better prioritize guests who are going to spend money in the parks and allow access in a certain way behind certain kind of gated uh, barriers that in, that encourage guest spending so um it's 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 really fascinating really interesting but it's gonna be a seismic shift and guys unfortunately this was coming this was always kind of the intention this is always where they wanted to go it's just hitting us earlier than we ever thought <laughs>